Now this is going to be the biggest and the best. Richard Kessler is betting a quarter of a billion dollars that the world will beat a pack to a former power plant on the west end of River Street. It's the largest private project ever done in the history of Savannah. But for the past hundred years, this whole end of River Street, this whole west end, has been set apart from what the public can come and enjoy. I said to the president of Georgia Power, I'm going to buy this building. A look inside Plant Riverside on this edition of Prime. America first. Okay. <laughs> on Wednesday, ground was broken on Project Riverside, a massive redevelopment of a part of River Street that hasn't been a part of the city's consciousness for over a century. Mayor Eddie Deloach says the impact will be far-reaching. Uh, we really, we really don't have an idea of what this means because it's so big. So the only thing we know is it's, it's going to be a powerful influence on this whole far end as far as the people working, people, opportunities for people to have. It's just going to be a great day for them. It's a great day for Savannah. Even before Wednesday's public event, WTOC Prime got an exclusive opportunity to go inside Plant Riverside and inside the head of its founder. Good morning, good morning. Richard Kessler owns the mansion on Forsyth Park and the Bohemian on River Street, in addition to nine other luxury hotels from Orlando, Florida to Beaver Creek, Colorado. He recently added the Armstrong House at the northern end of Forsyth Park to his acquisitions. But I've always admired the building. I, I think it's the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful structures in the city. And uh, so when, uh, it was funny, I was riding by it one day coming from the mansion, and I looked at it, and I said, you know, I believe that could be bought. Riverside. Welcome to Plant Riverside. Plant Riverside. But the Armstrong discussion is for another day. On this day, he wants to talk about a part of the city that has been off the public path for more than a century. What we're developing is nothing like it, frankly, on the East Coast, and there's nothing of the quality level we're developing that's in Savannah today. And I don't think it'll ever be anything of similar quality. The site Kessler is referring to is on the west end of River Street, where MLK Jr. Boulevard dead ends into the Savannah River. I think we all knew that the power plant, when, when the time was right, would be the, the keystone of the historic district once again. This site at the end of West Broad Street, today Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and the river has for centuries been Maine at Maine in Savannah. And it's been off limits for about 100 years. The new stage will be coming out. Uh, it kind of lines up with this. So the new stage will be out here about, first of all, the walkway comes out 20 feet. Okay. And the stage goes to about 20 feet beyond that. So you can imagine. So the about, walkway would be up, like right here? Yeah, through, and the stage is kind of is into that walkway, you oh, might wow. say. So the stage, the whole thing is out about 50, 60 feet out over the water. What's envisioned for the site is much more than a hotel. The idea is to create an entertainment district anchored by four-star accommodations. It turns out this property is right in the bend of the river. Okay. And the advantage of that is when you're up in these rooms and you up on the roof, when these ships come in, it'll look like the ships are coming right at you. Oh, wow. It has uh, retail. It has restaurants. It has hotels. It has community facilities. It has a park. It has all these things. My friends, Rockbridge is doing this hotel here. It's a three-star hotel. Kessler notes his development, which has been in the planning for four years, has already drawn other commercial developers. Once they saw what we were doing, before that, you could have bought the site. Once they saw the magnitude of what we were doing, that encouraged them to go forward and do their hotel on their site. Interesting. So, I did not know that was going to be there. Yeah, huh? yeah, that's what that is. Okay. And so you're talking about, see, the ripple effect? That's the, the first ripple right there. Now, this is where the couples would love to come. Not even counting the ripple effect, Kessler says Plant Riverside will light up the city's cash registers. We, we believe we will employ about 700 people in that complex, 700. For our investment dollars, generally hotels create more jobs per investment dollar than most industries and most other businesses you could possibly bring into a city. It creates more jobs. That calculation to the city alone and only from Plant Riverside over the next 10 years, we believe will be about $30 million to the city. $30 million. And about $9 million to the county. How did you pick that spot? I mean, did you just see that? Like, you know, that would be great for, I mean, <laughs> I, I would never think to put all that there, but obviously I'm not in your industry, but right, I mean, right. 
<laughs> well, first of all, um, the river is the most desired location for a hotel room of any place in Savannah, the river. People want to be on the river. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, as we know it today, Old West Broad Street, was the very first paved street in Savannah. And it came to the river right here, right at this site. Planned Riverside holds an honored place in Savannah. When we come right back, we'll tell you why. When you're raised by wolves, there's no 10 any deal where you can carry out a large Pizza Hut pizza, any toppings, any recipe, any day of the week. But now I can even carry out a large pan meat lovers for just 10 bucks. <laughs> the 10 any deal, because no one out pizzas the hut. It's what everyone's after. The new 2017 Nissan Rogue. With intelligent forward emergency braking that could stop your car for you. Get to Nissan's Go Rogue year-end event for year-end savings on Rogue and the rest of the Nissan lineup. Take on any galaxy. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, in theaters December 16th. Get 0% financing for up to 72 months on 11 models. Or save up to 10000 on select models. It's the season for sugar and spice. Measuring. Mixing. Melting. Stirring things up. It's a sip, a taste, a nibble. It's the perfect time to let us do the cooking. Find the perfect platters for your event in our Gather and Share brochure. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Ready to lose that stubborn fat without breaking a sweat? At Fast Fit Body Sculpting, we guarantee you'll lose 3 to 9 inches of fat in less than 45 days. It's not only the inches and pounds that I've lost, my confidence is back. I feel incredible. My results were amazing. FastFit in Bluffton and Pooler exclusively uses technology approved by the FDA for immediate fat reduction. The results are amazing. Use technology to shrink fat with the FastFit guarantee. Call today to schedule your consultation and get your body back. Need a unique Christmas gift idea? Well, don't miss the Junior League of Savannah's annual thrift sale tomorrow, 7.30 to 3 at the Savannah Civic Center with the preview shopping event tonight. Tickets are available at the Civic Center box office or online. In 1913, Savannah's leadership, working under the light of electric moons that rung the city, fancied themselves progressive. They proved it by building a power plant on the river years ahead of comparably sized cities. We see Savannah take a very bold move in the late 19th century, early 20th century to adopt electricity. This is a very modern idea. And at that time, there really wasn't a precedent for what a power plant should look like. We hadn't made power plants before. So what we see here and what we've inherited today, now 100 years later, is a magnificent building that was designed by the firm of Stone and Webster. And they spent a lot of time thinking about how power should be perceived as, uh, in terms of a city's larger civic identity, something that we weren't afraid of, because it's almost mystical. Even before that momentous innovation, West Broad was the city's most important street. The, the city has always looked to the river for its needs over many centuries. And this site actually going back to the very beginning when Savannah was laid out was in fact the original port of the city. It's where the river met land on the west side of Savannah and the west side of Savannah was the gateway to the rest of the United States. So the site of Plant Riverside is approximately a thousand feet of water frontage on the Savannah River and through its earliest years this site was always Maine at Maine for Savannah. If you think about Savannah's position on the East Coast, the Savannah River takes us out to the Atlantic Ocean and onto the world and if you come into the west side of the center city of Savannah, what we know today as the Oglethorpe Plan, the historic district, the west side is our connection to the rest of America. Christian Satil is the dean of the Architectural School of SCAD and also the man who envisioned the new SCAD Museum, the city's proposed canal district, and the K building on Ellis Square. Okay. This is a masonry smokestack for that use.
He believes that the opening of Plant Riverside returns the city to its historic roots. Very challenging project, but the transformational possibility of this project to take part of Savannah that is unknown today, it's not part of the experiences that we enjoy as a community, four acres of land on the waterfront, and really find a way to knit that into the experience of being in Savannah, enjoying the waterfront, connecting the dots, and really bringing the Oglethorpe Plan, the National Historic Landmark District, back to the river. Since 1912, since really 1910 when they started building it, um, we did. Did you watch it? No public had access to any of this 1183. Yeah, I mean, so I over 100 yeah. years, yeah. it was all fenced in because yeah. it had an industrial use. That was imported Savannah. Now, for the first time since these 100 years, you got this access to the river for the public. You have this access to the river for the public. You have this access is coming through here. You have this access coming through here to outdoors. And then you have this one here. Yeah. So we've got four accesses to the river for the public that it's never had. We're going to indent it about a foot so that we can actually display art all along this front, which is part of the art gallery for sale. One of Satil's architectural challenges is to incorporate as much of the power plant's look into the plush appointments of a premier hotel. Everywhere we can expose some of the old big so steel pretty, structure yeah. we will. For example, all this stuff will come off of here. Uh -huh. You see that your steel beams, you see the size of your steel beams? That steel beam is there, and all that concrete will come off. All that will be cleaned up, it'll be painted like a dark gray or a dark brown. All your steel will be. So when it's all done, this will be very structural looking, and it'll yeah. look like a power plant. Uh, all these were what are called heat sinks for the power. And we're going to use this, we're going to close it off and make wine storage oh, out of cool. this. Mm -hmm. Looks like wine storage, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll like a probably, cellar, yeah. We'll probably take out this group here so we can expand the bar all the way to here for seating and whatever. But Plant Riverside is imagined to be much more than a power plant. Every, every child in Savannah oh, will, will, will come to see. Big field trip. Kessler's vision continues after this. It's Steinmart's 14-hour sale this Saturday starting at 8 a.m. with special preview day Friday. Save up to 80% off department store prices. Shop early for incredible doorbusters. Plus, save $10 off a purchase of $30 or more. Steinmart's 14-hour sale. Don't miss it. before the race even starts. That's what drives us. Drive pink. Drive safe. Drive now. AutoNation. We're live. Oh, we're live in Savannah. Reporting live off Old Woodfield Avenue. Live from City Hall. Reporting live at Fort Stewart. Live tonight on Tybee Island. Reporting live from Isle of Hope with the most watched news in the market. Good morning and thank you for watching the news at Daybreak. And good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We're local. Good morning and welcome to beautiful downtown Brooklyn. The march for peace in Walter. Close to 100 people walking the streets. Reporting and engaged in the community. The man accused of causing that crash that killed the five Georgia Southern nursing students faced a Bryan County judge. DOC had the only news crew in the courtroom. We're now. Things we were all seeing all day today. This investigation and the explanation into it continues. We'll be here to keep you updated, of course. On air, online, on social. We have new video just in. You can post directly to our Facebook page. A great way that you can still get the latest information. It's on the WTOC mobile weather app. We are. We are. We are. WTOC. It's Steinmart's 14-hour sale this Saturday starting at 8 a.m. with Special Preview Day Friday. Save up to 80% off department store prices. Shop early for incredible doorbusters. Plus, save $10 off a purchase of $30 or more. Steinmart's 14-hour sale. Don't miss it. Richard Kessler grew up in Effingham County, descendant of the Salzburgers who came to Georgia in 1734. The industriousness that characterized the Salzburgers was evident in Kessler, who earned a master's degree in industrial engineering. I was actually offered my first job by Cecil Day at Savannah Beach, walking on the beach one afternoon. Uh, he invited me to go to work with him. 
uh, to teach me the real estate development business, and one day we'd become partners, and I, one day I'd become president, CEO of the company. And I was 23 years old, and I thought this was a great idea, and I didn't care what I got paid. And actually, I, I was uh, offered, uh, my pay at that time, I think, was $9,000 a year with a master's degree in engineering from Georgia Tech. And I was offered 12000 a year by uh, banks and other institutions, but I wanted to learn real estate and, and enjoy and explore this whole idea of potential and could I, what could I do with that. And then three months later, four months later, after I went with him, he announced and put on my desk something after he took a long summer trip and said, Days Ends of America. And I read it. He said, read it and tell me what you think of this. I did. He and, he, and he said, Richard, do you think we can do this? And I said, absolutely, we can do this. And he said, well, great. He said, well, let's round up everybody else, talk to them about it, and then we launched Days in America just a few months after I was with him. And so overnight, I was deep into the whole idea of real estate development and potential and people and hospitality and all those things that really had shaped my background and was my personal interest. I did that and then in 1975, I was about 29 years old at the time, um, days then uh, Cecil asked me to come back to Atlanta because I was running and set up a number of businesses that he and I owned together, development businesses, building days ends, leasing mm -hmm. them to corporate operating days ends. And, um, he asked me to come back and take over all of Days Ends na nationally. I was 29 years old. I was the younger CEO in the industry of any major company. And um, it was a real challenge, and I really enjoyed it. And I spent, uh, overall, I spent 14 years uh, with Days Ends, developing it and making it a national company. I ran the company then as president, CEO, and then chairman for nine years. And then we sold the company in 1984. The art and all the colors, it's, it's not something you see every day in a hotel. Right. That's one of the first things I noticed when yeah. I came here. It's just... It's kind of like new survival. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> out of day's end, he dabbled in banking and some residential development. Eventually, he made his way back to Savannah when he turned a Coca-Cola bottling company into what is now known as the Bryce, but was originally the Mulberry. Mm -hmm. Which was the first real boutique hotel developed here in Savannah Market during those oh, wow. years. That's mm -hmm. what I saved for my interview here. Yeah, that's right. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did the Mulberry Inn in the okay. early 80s. And when we opened that, and that's before we sold the company, it made me realize how successful that idea could be because it immediately was profitable, immediately was very successful, and uh, Savannah embraced it. And since then, as you know, that whole idea nationally has grown. Oh, yeah. When I did that in 19, early 80s, nobody even knew how to spell beauty. Yeah, you have a good view from here. Yeah, just ahead, we'll look at the things that set the Kessler Collection properties apart on WTOC Prime. Unclaimed freight notice this weekend at American Freight. Over 1,000 truckloads of living room furniture. Seven piece living room groups that include a sofa, love seat, coffee table, two end tables, and two designer lamps. You get all seven pieces from only $398 complete. Free layaway, same day delivery. Come to the Looney Docks this weekend only at American Freight in Savannah at 15,000 Abercorn Street. Look for the big American flag. 232 2229. Prices are low and staying low at Harvey's. Prices way down, right down to the ground because we're low and staying low. At Harvey's, we've lowered the prices on over 3,000 items across the store so you can get more for your money. Like blue bonnet spread sticks was $1.10, now just a dollar every day. And Charmin Essentials bath tissue was $6.59, now just $5 every day. Harvey's, great prices, great service. That's a promise. One of the many things I love about Cindy Crawford Home is that we manufacture our upholstery right here in Mississippi. This Rooms to Go factory employs more than 1,000 craftspeople, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. Nothing is more satisfying than quality American craftsmanship at great Rooms to Go prices. So from the talented people who build it to the loyal customers who have chosen our furniture over the last 10 years, we'd like to say thanks. Thank you for making us part of your home.
Did you know that distracted driving causes nearly 25% of all car accidents? For your safety and the safety of others, please don't text and drive. I'm attorney Ken Nugent. One call, that's all. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but this is our Bohemian uh, Abusendorf piano here. Oh. This is a nine foot uh, grand uh, Busendorfer. This piano is made in Vienna, Austria. They, they only make a few every year, very limited production. This is like the Rolls Royce of pianos. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. That's the Rolls Royce really of pianos. Was, there you go, Busendorfer. <laughs> Kessler's personal touch is on all of the properties in the Kessler collection, which are all themed around art and music. This will be an African bar. We, we're thinking about calling it the Crocodile Bar. Crocodile Bar. Crocodile Bar. Uh, I was just in Africa hunting uh, about a month ago, and uh, I was able to uh, reap a 15 and a half foot crocodile. You killed a 15 and a half foot crocodile yourself? Yes, yes. And we're going to have him stuffed, and we will bring him into the African bar. And we're thinking about calling it the Crocodile Bar. Uh, this, uh, this African bar has been a dream of mine for years. Yeah. I've always wanted to do you're, one. Now you're like this close, you can see it. So yeah. now I, I can see it already, because I've been collecting for, oh, 10 years for, some, for a, a bar yeah. like this. For Plant Riverside, the developer will go a bit more exotic. The dinosaur actually will sit in this big area. So and he, right he will in the go. Middle. He will face this direction. He will go all the way to where that blue tank yeah. is, all the way to here. That is going to be huge. It's huge, huge. Okay. And these doors will actually roll up. Oh, and they will, like at the Bohemian. You guys like the Bohemian. Yeah. Yeah. But he knows that his biggest asset is the same one that brought the Salzburgers to Savannah. You'll be able to throw a tennis ball and hit the boats, I think. <laughs> and some other, when they come, when they, and the ships when they come by. I always was intrigued with the idea of seeing potential in people, in things, and in situations. When we come right back, a look at the potential of the west side of River Street. When you're raised by wolves, there's no 10 any deal where you can carry out a large Pizza Hut pizza, any toppings, any recipe, any day of the week. But now I can even carry out a large pan of meat lovers for just 10 bucks. <laughs> The 10 any deal because no one out pizzas the hut. Ready to lose that stubborn fat without breaking a sweat? At Fast Fit Body Sculpting, we guarantee you'll lose three to nine inches of fat in less than 45 days. Fast Fit has helped me to feel healthy and young and alive. Fast Fit in Bluffton and Pooler exclusively uses technology approved by the FDA for immediate fat reduction. Fast Fit is easy, it's painless. And it works. Use technology to shrink fat with the Fast Fit Guarantee. Call today to schedule your consultation and get your body back. Santa's on a toy drive to make sure every boy and girl gets a gift this holiday season. Ho, ho, ho! It's the Toys for Tots Toy Drive. Join the Marines, WTOC, and the Oglethorpe Driving Club in making this a very special Christmas. Saturday, December 10th, the collection continues from 7.30 to 10.30 a.m. at Haversham Village. See Santa, the Marines, and some of the coolest cars in town. Be sure to bring an unwrapped toy to make this a very merry Christmas for a deserving child. A Savannah tradition returns. The Savannah Philharmonic Orchestra and Chorus presents the annual Holiday Pops Concert. Join artistic director and conductor Peter Shannon Saturday, December 17th at the Johnny Mercer Theater with American Traditions Competition Gold Medal winner Michael Molecule. There's also a one-hour family matinee at 3 p.m. with the Savannah Children's Choir. Tickets are on sale now at savannahboxoffice.com, all brought to you in part by Enmark, WTOC, and these sponsors. See you at the Philharmonic. Need a unique Christmas gift idea? Well, don't miss the Junior League of Savannah's annual thrift sale tomorrow, 7.30 to 3 at the Savannah Civic Center with the preview shopping event tonight. Tickets are available at the Civic Center box office or online. With upward of 14 million tourists coming to Savannah each year and 11 hotels currently in some phase of development, some locals wonder if we're overbuilding. You can't throw the baby out with the bathwater here because the baby is critical to our future. The bathwater, we need to clean up the bathwater, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Traffic is certainly one way, um, but it's, that's probably the, the biggest thing that people complain about. So if we can fix that, and it's fixable, 
to a great extent is fixable. We fix that, a lot of the, the tourism questions then goes away. As far as uh, too many hotels or whatever, I think, I think you have to let the economy decide that. But Kessler does feel the pain of the congestion and growth and has some ideas to alleviate the pressure. And there's some, some people kind of feel that tourism has reached the oversaturation point in Savannah, whether it's parking, you know, rent downtown is too expensive, uh, you know, there's just not enough space for people to go. Do you think that we've hit that point or do you think we will ever hit that point where there's, I guess, too many tourists? Because that is a complaint that we hear a lot. Well, I think, I think it's easy to... Um, when you when you're following a horse and carriage around and and you're in your car and you're 10 minutes late to your appointment and you think oh my gosh all these tourists are in my way and I can't get to where I want to get to I mean it gets frustrating certainly uh, I think we need to separate the issues I think we need to look at it and we say okay first of all let's look at what tourism means to Savannah it means economic health I will tell you it means major, major jobs. If you took the tourism out of this city, there would be thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs that would disappear overnight. And millions of dollars. There would be millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of tax revenues that would disappear that support the things that the citizens enjoy. So, uh, so tourism is, is part of Savannah. That is, in a sense, it defines Savannah to a great extent. So, so let's then look at what are the things that aggravate us from time to time. Traffic, right? How do then, how do we, how do we do, how do we really think through our traffic control? For example, I've, I've spent some time down on River Street. I've tried to eat outside in front of the Bohemian, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, eat lunch. Well, it's great until it's great until a big but two big buses come, mm -hmm. park right in front of the hotel, yep. and the buses are running, pouring out the smoke and the fumes. And here I am trying to eat, and other people are trying to eat and enjoy the River Street, and all we can hear is a roar of a bus and smell of gasoline fumes. That is not what we need to be doing. That is negative part of tourism, but it's not a necessary part of tourism. Is that what I would propose is that as, as well as delivery trucks by 8 o'clock in the morning all trucks all trucks and buses would be off of River Street mm -hmm. period and it becomes only cars and maybe later sample or even experiment with taking the cars off in the future of River Street and see what that does but certainly the easy obvious first step is take off the buses take off the trucks until uh, let them come and serve their the places just like our places. You have to serve them then by 8 o'clock in the morning, and then it starts cleaning up River Street, for example, and takes away that negative of what tourism, what tourism sometimes yeah, brings and the images we have of it. Then the same kind of thing as we look at the traffic around the parks. We need to think about uh, how do we control that traffic in a way and who's allowed uh, on certain streets at certain times of the day. Part of Plant Riverside will be a parking deck that includes public parking. That lot will be wrapped in a hotel. Add music, a monument to Dr. King, splash fountains, and two and a half acres of open space, and you begin to believe Kessler's assertion. I don't do anything to take things backwards. For WTOC Prime, I'm Cyria Sandlin.